This is the Gothic drawing room. The room was designed by Florence Sloan and the master architect of this home, Charles Woodson. However, the room wasn't built here on site. It was actually constructed by another architect, Frank R. Watson, a Philadelphian-based architect who also redid the interior of a church called Christ in St. Luke's in the Norfolk area, which Mrs. Sloan attended. They had the room designed after the interior of a Gothic cathedral, as you can kind of span around and see. Now the room was actually constructed in Philadelphia over a year's period with the team of Belgian wood carvers. When it was finished, it was broken apart and shipped down to Norfolk to the Norfolk International Terminals, where it was then attached to the house by the Chapman Decorative Company, the same company that built Hershey Mansion in Pennsylvania. The room is white oak, walls and ceilings, and teak on the floors, and it now houses our silver collection. But in the early 1920s, this would have been a social space used for guest entertainment uh, and music. So we have the Steinway piano and a Mueller organ uh, back here as well, all of which were used to host parties. This room is known as the Great Hall. It was the foundation of the original five-room summer cottage that the Sloans began in 1908. It once was the major living room for this home, but is now the house for our Asian collection. This is a portion of our collection of tsubas, which are the sword guards on a katana, as you can see in the back. William Jr., the son of Mrs. Sloan, actually collected these as a young boy. There's a mixture of both iron as well as something that's called shakudo, a gold metal mix that is 97% copper and 3% gold. The sword in the back case with that nice shiny sheath on it is actually abalone shell and once belonged to Louis Tiffany. The Sloan's bought it in the early 1930s. This is the little library. It once held numerous books in the Sloan collection which they actually loaned out to the public. Uh, it's now home again for more of our Asian collection. This is also a transition in the style of architecture in the house. The original home was arts and crafts in style, however this room switches to the half-timbered Tudor look. This is the Sloan's master bedroom. This is actually one of the original five rooms on the home as well, and was pulled off of the house in 1912 to make room for the new additions. It houses some of the furniture in the collection, as well as pieces done by Carl von Reidingsvard, Charles Woodson, and Frank Watson. The room also holds several of the paintings in our collection. This is the morning room. This is actually where the Sloan family would have breakfast every day in this breakfast nook. The Flemish tapestries that are on the back wall are 16th century, and the linen fold carving that goes all around this room was done by the master architect and master woodcarver, Charles Woodson. The Sloan family was adamant about collecting Chinese jade, and the oldest piece in the entire collection is in this case. It is this large rectangular shape. It is a Neolithic jade kong. It comes from a site in eastern China called Liangzhu. It is nearly 5,000 years old in age, uh, and like I said, is the oldest piece in the collection. The exact function for this piece is not necessarily known. Uh, there is debate over whether it is a libation vessel, uh, jewelry, excuse me, or ornaments, ornamentation, uh, or possibly something to hold incense. Uh, the rest of the jade in the case, though, uh, is much more traditional, much newer, and it is between the 18th, 19th, and 20th century. Jade does come in numerous colors, so it's not limited to the spinach green that you see in this back case with the cranes. And rather, the most popular jade at the moment is white jade, uh, which is best demonstrated in some of the bowls that you can see running along the bottom of this case. This large square piece is actually a 17th century Nepalese votive plaque. The central figure made of lapis represents Krishna, the eighth reincarnation of Vishnu. This piece was done in Nepal using copper and bronze, molded out and then put inserted with semi-precious stones. Two pieces that look like door handles on the bottom are actually a part of a horse's armor set from Western Zhou Dynasty in China. They're about 3,500 years old. The Sloans also collected numerous bodhisattvas. Uh, some of the pieces that are on the bottom belong to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos. The pieces on the top, Hindu and Buddhist pieces, are from India as well as Japan. We have a large collection of ivory in this museum. However, to give a little bit of personal character, the chopsticks that are located on the bottom of this case were actually used by E.K. during his 21st birthday. Everybody who attended got a pair of ivory chopsticks to eat with and they got to take them home afterwards. The birthday party was also in Paris. Mrs. Sloan began collecting in 1901 and the first piece in the entire collection is this Satsuma bowl, which is a Japanese bowl that was given to her by her sister Grace Stiles, who had actually traveled to Asia. 
Mrs. Sloan continued to collect Satsuma wares throughout her life all the way up until her death in 1953. We're standing in Mrs. Sloan's dressing room. It's the only room in the house that actually has a 1920s feel to it. One thing we still have in the collection are a large majority of Mrs. Sloan's dresses, some of which are currently still on display. We're now in the dining room. This room actually took Charles Woodson three years to carve, the longest out of any of the rooms in this home. The room was actually once situated on the front of the house, which is why we now have these large blank squares. There would have been stained glass window in them at one point. Another nice feature of this room to hide the light switches and not ruin the aesthetics of your dining is to hide the light switches in the walls. The dining room table and chairs were carved by Charles Woodson. The actual tabletop, though, is an old English floorboard that's been converted into a table. All of the cabinets and buffets in this room are done by Carl von Reidingsfard, another wood carver who worked on the home, primarily on the exterior. However, there are loose bits of furniture in this house, like in this room, that belong to him as well. An area that's traditionally not on tour is the water tower. This large, empty space that we're standing in right now once held a large steel bulb in it. The Sloans had to scrap the metal, though, during World War II to help with the war effort, and now we're left with this large, empty space. There are two rooms attached to this tower, though, and those are the wood carving studios for Charles Woodson, who was on site from 1908 to 1922, working on the home and taking it up and attaching it to the rest of the building. Originally, the water tower was on site and was not actually encased in this large structure. Mrs. Sloan didn't like the aesthetics of that large steel bulb on her property, so instead she had Charles Woodson design what looks like a lighthouse structure to wrap around the steel bulb. It encased the water tower all the way up until the Second World War where finally it was scrapped, and now we have this large blank space. At the moment, there is no plans to turn this into any sort of additional gallery space as the floors and the structure itself need work and repair before we can open it to the public. You can get the full tour of the Hermitage Museum right here on TV48 later this month. For information about visiting in person, log on to the hermitagemuseum.org site.